Um, at this time, I'd like to uh, welcome Ben Franklin to the podium. How do you do? It is my great pleasure to be here this afternoon. Well, actually, uh, at my age, it's a great pleasure to be anywhere. <laughs> but I'm here in Virginia on my way to Williamsburg, not to complain, but rather to celebrate. And I, I should tell you, I, I am not known as a public speaker, but rather a public listener. But at today's event, I suspect you would prefer to hear me talk than to watch me listen. And so I shall. I have something to say, and with your approbation, I shall say it. Today we recognize a commitment by a local citizen to serve in our government. Today we celebrate the voice of an electorate in bringing this citizen into public office. And so today we consummate our republic and our democratic process. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a patriot. It has been my fortuitous and providential life's journey to have witnessed and participated in the creation of our nation for over 30 years. When in Albany, New York in 1753, I first proposed a common council of colonies to meet with the Indian nations as a single representative unit. When in England, at the charge of the Pennsylvania Assembly, I witnessed firsthand the mechanizations of a strong and misguided parliament to subjugate this nation and its people to the will of its monarch. I returned home to discover a population fiercely determined to participate in the events and discussions affecting our economy, our safety, and our liberty. Thereafter, I sat with many distinguished gentlemen on a committee which reviewed and approved a document drafted by, by Mr. Jefferson, a Virginian you must know, who, uh, which declared ourselves independent of the monarchy of Britain. And to secure our freedom, we went to war with our mother country. Our general in that war, yes, another Virginian, George Washington. I went to France to seek funding for that war. It was very costly for the loss of life and of property. In France, in 1783, I signed the document ending hostilities and thereafter returned home with the prospect of living the remainder of my life in private with my daughter and her family. Instead, most recently, I was in attendance at the Constitution Convention in Philadelphia. Uh, we met there to cor correct deficiencies and to modify the Articles of Confederation under which we've been conducting our federal business since the war. It seems that Mr. Mason, uh, do I say another Virginian, had, been, uh, create, uh, had moved us into creating an entirely new document and a radically different form of government to be sure that anything we could possibly have imagined 20 or even 10 years ago. It is unique to this nation and to the nations of the world. It gives the power of government to us, to we, the people. We met behind closed doors for the better part of closed doors, and I should say windows, for the better part of four months. We debated, we argued. Uh, I, for one, was not enamored of all of the ideas that were presented, and I spoke my mind freely. But like all good carpenters and joiners, we fashioned a compromise of our thoughts by taking first a little bit off one side 
and a little bit off another until our thoughts, in fact, uh, the two opposing uh, ideas fit snugly together. No word of our actions escaped to the world outside during this time. When at last we were finished and our document was ready for general review and we hope general acceptance, we were encouraged to share and finally discuss it with all interested parties. Outside the assembly I was met and, and asked what kind of a government would we have now in this country and I replied, a republic, if you can keep it. Today we celebrate keeping our republic. Thank you very much. Scott McGarry, uh, the Vice Chair of the Electoral Board, and I are here to present Libby with her Certificate of Election. The Arlington County Electoral Board uh, was in continuous meeting from shortly after the election until late afternoon on Saturday, the 10th of November. That wasn't all my fault, though. No. It, in <laughs> fact, I wouldn't blame you for any of it. Thank you. And we um, did certify that Libby T. Garvey had been reelected to the Arlington County Board for a term that begins on January 1st, 2013, and ends on December 31st, 2016. That doesn't mean you get a vacation between now and the 1st of January. No, no, but I get my very own four-year term. Yes. I'm so excited. So excited. <laughs> So, yeah. we'd like to present you with this certificate oh, of election. Oh, thank you so very much. You're welcome. Oh, you're thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, next is supposed to come the swearing in. And Paul Ferguson, our clerk of the court, is supposed to do that. And I think he's on his way. He asked me, he promised, I'll be there by 4.45 so I can do my kids' basketball game. Is that okay? Um, and I told him, of course, it was. So he's not here yet, so I think what I'll do is go ahead with my remarks, and then we'll do the swearing in after that. It'll be quick. So. I want to thank our singers. In fact, could we give them all another round of applause? Wow. They worked on that harmony themselves and came up with themselves. Pretty amazing. Um, and I can't tell you how much fun it's been. You know, I've enjoyed telling people that Ben Franklin was going to come make remarks. That's really been fun. Thank you so much, Ben, for coming, Barry. And uh, I also want to tell you how um, very pleased I am. You know, the last time I was sworn in in March, um, none of my family was able to be here. And now I've got my daughters, Shannon and Ruth, their husbands, Dave and Francisco, and my grandkids, who are going to help with the swearing in in just a little bit, Jeremiah, Michaela, Owen, and Megan. And I want to thank everyone for coming. Um, I am keenly aware that the only thing standing between you all and the holiday weekend is my remarks and, and this swearing in, so I, I will be fairly brief. Um, and I want to say a few more thank yous um, and just a few words about uh, what got us here. But before that, I think we've all heard about the terrible events in Connecticut today. Um, and at this point, 28 dead, 20 of them children in Newton, Connecticut, um, and our hearts go out to the town of Newton and uh, the Sandy Hook Elementary School community. And I'd like to just have a little moment of silence before we proceed. So a few more thank yous. I especially want to thank my colleagues on both the county board and the school board for coming, and Mary Hines for getting us started today. Thank you. Um, 
and actually, Paul's going to do the introductions of electeds, and if I do it now, I'm probably going to mess it up and not give him anything to do. So he will introduce everybody by name when he gets here. Um, and thank you all of the electeds for coming. I Believe me, I know how um, busy everybody is and how many um, events everybody's got to attend. And I want to thank, too, uh, Barbara Dinellon and her staff, my new work family, for coming. I want to thank Patrick Murphy, who I think is here, and his staff. Uh, that's the work family I left to come here for being here. I know how hard the two CEOs of this county and their staff work. Now, I was pretty sure when I came here that the county staff worked just as hard as the school staff, and they do. It never stops. To our employees and our staff, our manager and our superintendent, you are the people that make Arlington the wonderful place it is, and that's a lot of very heavy lifting. It goes on 24-7, 365 days a year. It never stops. And we cannot thank you enough. So seeing as this is my second swearing in in nine months, uh, people have already asked me how I like my job. And I tell them I'm having a blast. The work is fascinating. I learn something and often a whole lot every single day. And I learn it from some of the best experts in their fields, both staff and citizens. I meet new people just about every day. And best of all, just like on the school board, at the local level of government, you can make a real immediate difference in people's lives. A job simply doesn't get better than this. Now, as some of you know, I grew up um, in a variety of places. I lived in Massachusetts, Connecticut, Illinois, Alberta, Canada, Wisconsin, and a few months in New Hampshire. And every time I arrived at a new school system, they were studying the American Revolution. Luckily, that has actually always been one of my favorite parts of history to study. And I've always loved history because of how it connects you to people who lived before. And you can see how we are connected to those who are still to come. It makes you realize that we're all part of something much bigger than ourselves. So let's go back briefly to Mr. Franklin's time again, when this democracy of ours um, that made our gathering today possible began. Well, first, of course, back then, I wouldn't be getting sworn in. Women couldn't run for office. They couldn't even vote. Most African Americans couldn't run for office or vote. And they were slaves. Today, Barack Obama has been reelected, and there will be a much bigger swearing in for him next month. We as a nation have come very, very far in a few hundred years. And we can be critical sometimes of people who lived in the past, you know, for being hypocritical about what they meant when they talked about unalienable rights, and it didn't include women, and it didn't include African Americans and others. But they did, I think, the job that we all have to do. You start at where you are and you work to make things better. And we are so lucky today because now we just need to tweak the system, not have a revolution. Back in 1776, being an active, involved citizen was rough. So how many of you know what happened to the 56 men who signed the Declaration of Independence? I suspect some of you do, but not everyone. Those men who signed and pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor, I can tell you that for most of them, things did not end well. Five of the signers were captured by the British as traitors and tortured before they died. Twelve had their homes ransacked and burned. Two lost their sons serving in the Revolutionary Armory. Another had two sons captured. Nine of the 56 fought and died from wounds or hardships of the Revolutionary War. What kind of men were they? Twenty-four were lawyers and jurists. Eleven were merchants. Nine were farmers and large plantation owners, men of means, well-educated. But they signed the Declaration of Independence knowing full well that the penalty would be death if they were captured. Those, most of them, if they lived, lost everything. And here we are today, comfortably celebrating what has become commonplace, yet another swearing in after an election. We are so lucky. But in this comfortable, simple event that has such significance for how we live, there is, I think, a caution. 
the same one Mr. Franklin gave. We have a republic if we can keep it. And I worry sometimes that we're in danger of becoming too comfortable with our system and taking things too much for granted. Our men and women in the armed services put their lives on the line every day. So do our police and fire who are represented here. Thank you, Chief, for being here. We owe them all a tremendous debt of gratitude for their work and sacrifice, which keeps us here safe and comfortable. And we owe them the very best government we can provide. So I pledge to you today and to them to be the best county board member I can be for the next four years. Thank you so much for coming. And I think I saw Paul come in. And I think we can make it official now. Thank you. Thank you, Libby. Uh, Libby. I told them you'd introduce the electeds. Uh, thank you. I, I will take care of that. I'd uh, first like to uh, thank you for your indulgence. Uh, Libby is a neighbor of mine. Uh, our families have known each other for a long time, and my son has a freshman high school basketball game at Wakefield today. Uh, so Libby said it's fine if you want to go down and see the first half of the game and then miss Ben Franklin. And so I apologize to Ben Franklin also uh, because I would have enjoyed uh, hearing him. And I did get to hear most of your remarks, so, so thank you. Uh, it's uh, impressive to um, see how many people are out here on a Friday afternoon, community leaders, uh, uh, elected officials, county staff, uh, school staff. Um, thank you for allowing me to uh, introduce the elected officials. I know that Mary Hines, our county board chair, was here. Um, I'm not sure she's still here. She's in the back. Our vice chairman, uh, Walter Tejada, is over on the side. Uh, Jay Fassett is uh, right over there. Jay. Uh, from the, uh, since Libby's a former school board member, I'll introduce school board members next. Uh, uh, we have uh, James Lander, I did see here. Uh, we have uh, newly elected school board member Noah Simon and uh, outgoing school board member Todd McCracken. And uh, I believe uh, the superintendent, uh, Dr. Murphy, was already introduced. Oh, Abby Raphael is here in the front, I'm sorry. Uh, Abby is the uh, vice chair currently? No? Well, Abby uh, is, uh, Possibly future vice chair and chair of the school board again. <laughs> anyway, um, I will uh, ask uh, Ms. Garvey if she would come forward along with uh, any family members who she would like to be pre have present. All the young ones to make it fun. All, oh, All right, great. Jeremiah, Michaela, Megan, Owen. Oh, I forgot to introduce the constitutional officers who are possibly the most important. Uh, uh, for, 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 right. Frank O'Leary, our treasurer, is here. Uh, Frank, my apologies. And I, did I miss anybody else? OK. Thanks. OK. All right. Great. great. Um, so, so who do we okay. have? We have Jeremiah's going to hold. Is everybody ready? Okay. We'll get them get ready. And then okay. I'll get over here. OK, everybody hold okay. it. Put your hands underneath. Oh, oh, you want to put your hand. No, I put my hand on top. You put your hand underneath. Hold it. OK? Can you do that, guys? I think we're ready to go. You are a great organizer. Okay. Do I have the wrong hand up? No, though? you have you have the right the right hand? No, the, the right hand. Please raise the right hand. hand. <laughs> I'm left handed. <laughs> uh, do you, Libby T. Garvey, solemnly uh, affirm uh, that you will uphold the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia, and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge all the duties incumbent upon you as a member of the Arlington County Board for a term commencing January first? Uh, 2013 and ending December 31st, 2016, according to the best of your ability. I do. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, I have to sign it. Forget. And actually, while I do that, I know um, Frank Wilson, my former colleague on the school board, is here. Are there any other I former elected? No, that's yeah. you. Oh, I can. Is any, any other elect? Electeds here that we'd missed. I don't want to miss anybody. Um, okay, Libby T. Garvey, you got to sign it too. Okay, great. Great. There's a reception, I understand. Too. There's a reception. The Washington Lee combo is going to be playing for us. Uh, thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. I know it's the holidays. Everybody's got a lot to do. I really, really appreciate everybody coming out. Thank you, and have a wonderful holiday season.